The Creality Halip Mage Pro might be the most hyped up resin 3D printer of 2023, but unfortunately it has not lived up to my expectations. And as such, I'm about to be very hard on Creality, and I truly hope this does not ruin my relationship with the company because over the last year, I really love the direction they've taken themselves. In my eyes, they have kind of gone from rags to riches in terms of their quality and their output product, but this machine absolutely misses the mark. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that I dislike the machine, though after watching a full review from Fauxhammer, I believe my resin ignorance is what causes me to still enjoy this printer. Maybe Creality is banking on a majority of their audience being similar to me. And as you can tell, this type of video is a brand new style for me. I typically stand in front of the camera, but I simply won't be able to cover all of my thoughts adequately that way. I have way too many very specific comments to make regarding this machine, and I don't want to miss anything. So there are a few main categories that I intend to cover. Those are specifications, resin and printing, screen and user experience, Hallet box slicing and the physical hardware. The Mage Pro is equipped with Creality's Integral Light Source 3.0, which is said to be able to print at 17 millimeters per minute. The Integral Light Source 3.0 has a light uniformity of greater than 90%, and the light intensity on this machine is 8,000 microwatts per centimeter squared in comparison to the standard Mage, which is 5,000 microwatts per centimeter squared. And yes, on the Mage Pro, you will need an extra 50 watts of input power. The Creality team team is also saying that the printer has a Dynex motion system, but I really have no idea what that means because the only explanation is that the build plate can be steadily lifted and lowered in just 1.2 seconds. While we're talking about the motion system, one thing of value to note is that the Mage Pro rides along two linear rails, which can definitely be of value when printing heavier models at high print speeds. And a happy point to pass along is that the Z-axis operates on a closed loop motor. So Creality coined the term Mage Arch for a flip of design and this is silly sounding, but that was one of the most important things about this machine for me. I previously came from a printer that had a removable lid, and it's a total mess to work with, along with the fact that there's nowhere to put the lid once it's been removed. And I can confidently say that the Mage Arch lid is incredibly convenient to use, and it feels very nice to operate. This machine has a built-in charcoal-based filter, and obviously there should be filter refills available on Crowley's website, but at the time of filming this video, I cannot find them available. Now there is a high powered fan in the back connected to a long bendy hose that clips into the machine so that you can vent your fumes out of a window. I printed indoors and was not gassed out so I believe the filter system works well. This machine also comes equipped with a smart resin fill station but that for me is going to be one of the biggest talking points so I have reserved a dedicated spot later on in the video. Now I want to touch on the user interface for this machine and the screen it is a beautiful full color high resolution touch display. The display does feel a little squishy, but otherwise operates swiftly without ever feeling laggy. And for the most part, what I'm about to say is not really an issue, but I'm not a huge fan of the small size of the display, because sometimes there are quite tiny buttons that need to be pushed. So to say this printer needs a firmware update is an understatement of a lifetime. That being said, Creality has promised me an update, but since it has not happened in the first four weeks of my ownership, I can only hope for it any day because quite honestly, it detracts very heavily from my overall user experience. The menu navigation system is quite possibly the worst navigation I have ever used on any printer. It's like the Russian nesting dolls of menu navigation. Something as rudimentary as moving the printer up and down requires accessing many multiple menus when it should be no more than one menu deep. And there are features missing that I can't possibly fathom why Creality left out, like moving the Z up and down manually. I think there are more scrolling text bars than static text bars in the menu system. That is not okay. There are way too many things happening on the screen at any given time and it makes my brain go into a static coma. This must be fixed immediately. You would think the previously mentioned bugs and UI problems are the end of the road, but that's not true. There are other issues that are even more problematic, like the ability to get into a state where the entire screen is completely frozen and you must reboot the printer in order to recover. Now I'm going to talk about my experience actually printing with the Creality Hallet Mage Pro. Creality sent me some of their high precision resin that was released with the Hallet Mage Pro, and after a little finagling, I was able to successfully get some very detailed models printed. 
However, I did fight with build plate adhesion, so I ended up overexposing my initial layers, which led to some minor elephant's foot. But the bigger problem is that it absolutely glued my models to the build plate. In order to get these models off of the build plate, I had to absolutely attack them with my spatula, and it did cause damage to the build plate. As for the true detail of these prints, I'm stepping up from a 2K printer directly to this 8K beast, so of course I'm gonna think the quality is absolutely nuts. If you want a true review on print quality, I recommend you source that information elsewhere. So thanks to the carbon filter, I was able to print inside with minimal smell. But the following day, I did come home to a resin smelling household. And that could be due to the resin vat not being fully cleaned, or maybe I was nose blind to the resin while I was printing. I tend to lean towards the former because I've been around a resin printer without the filter and it was miserable. Now I want to touch on some of the hardware issues that I had with this printer. There are four removable components of this machine and I had an issue with three of them. Now I'm going to start small with the build plate and in my opinion the build plate is fantastically designed when it comes to removability. The simple twist knob provides a super easy method to loosen and tighten the plate in order to ensure a snug fit while printing. That being said, the build plate is not perfect and this is 2023. Flex plates have existed on FDM printers for over 5 years now and you can even find them from third party retailers for SLA machines. This is not a gripe specifically with Crowley, but it's time to get the ball rolling and make this a standard feature on all SLA printers. And my final issue with the build plate is that when you remove it from a vat full of resin, it spills resin all over the lip where the lid rests. And while we're talking about resin cleanup, this is a great segue to the pump, the main reason why I wanted to get this printer. So I feel like the pump is almost more defining to the Hallet Mage Pro than the Integral Light Source 3.0, which is said to print at 17 millimeters a minute. And so many people have asked me, is the pump good? Is the pump bad? Would you spend an extra $300 to upgrade from the Mage to the Mage Pro just because of the pump? And my answer to that is yes, but not really. When you're done printing, most of the time there is still gonna be resin left in the vat. And you have one of two things you can do. You can either leave the resin in the vat for the future or you can pour it back into the bottle. And the best thing for you to do is to pour the resin back into the bottle. And that's where the pump comes into play because most of the time when you try and attempt to pour the resin back into the bottle, you spill the resin, you lose resin, which causes you to lose money. You might spill resin on yourself, which is toxic. That's a safety hazard. Sadly, the pump is so poorly designed, I'm very, very tempted to actually recommend if you purchase the Hallet Mage Pro that you remove the pump from the actual printer before you begin printing. So let's get on with it. The fact that this design left the drawing board, let alone the QC department, absolutely blows me away. When the build plate lifts up at high speed, Speeds, it totally obliterates the spout of the pump and before I ever even mated this printer with resin I broke the spout now I want to take a brief intermission to say that these videos do not come quickly and they certainly do not come easily so your support means the absolute world to me and if you're not subscribed I would greatly appreciate it if you considered hitting that subscribe button and becoming a member of the channel and if this video is giving you any value Clicking the like button would make my day just that much better. Now the final hardware component that I want to discuss is going to be the resin vat. And this printer uses a vat that has a Victor film attached to it, which is a replacement for standard FEP. The Victor film feels quite floppy, more akin to a plastic food film. And Creality informed me that this film is specifically designed for high speed printing and easy release of models. Despite keeping my pull-up speed at 1mm per second and a height of 8mm, I still encountered multiple instances of resin sticking to my film rather than my build plate. Now one of the remarkable features I feel compelled to highlight, and that is that this printer includes vat cleaning automatically. Vat cleaning activates the LCD at high power for several seconds, and this enables easy removal of a cured resin sheet from the bottom of the vat, leaving it clean and ready for the next print. 
In the past, some users have resorted to hacking print files in order to achieve a similar outcome, and while I'm not sure if this feature is natively integrated in competing products, having it integrated into this printer is highly convenient, especially for when you have a print fail and stick to the Victor film instead of the build plate. Unfortunately, the resin vat is not perfect because the attachment method of the vat to the printer has been a total nightmare. The resin vat is attached to the printer with a screw on the left and the right of the vat, and aligning those screws takes numerous attempts each time. The only method that I have found to install the vat correctly is to loosely screw in the right side and then apply a significant amount of backward pressure to the left side while screwing it in. And now onto the Halitbox software, which frankly I almost wish Creality hadn't ever developed because it is one of the weakest aspects about the entire package. In the box, you will receive a one year license to Cheaterbox Pro, which would save you a significant amount of money should you choose to use it. And unfortunately, my license was completely broken and non-functional, consequently I decided to give Halitbox a try and it turned out to be the wrong choice, I should have simply used the basic Cheaterbox. So I persisted using this software for slicing and printing and I encountered so many bugs and flaws that I simply couldn't capture and document everything in its entirety. Among the notable issues issues I encountered is that Halitbox appears to provide inaccurate reports on resin usage and print time estimates when a model is hollowed by the slicing software itself. Also, the error reports generated by the software were very poorly worded and lack clarity. When the slicer produces an error, it is so vague that you might not have any clue how to fix it, let alone what even caused the error. But one of the most concerning issues was related to the slicing speed. And while I understand that Cheetobox is not known for its speed either, Halitbox took slowness to a whole new level. If you choose to send files remotely to the printer, which is indeed a convenient feature, you should be prepared to allocate an additional 15 minutes for the transfer process. What's even worse is that if it's your first time attempting to transfer a file wirelessly since booting up the Halitbox software, the transfer is going to fail, requiring you to go through all of the previous steps all over again. And the sluggish performance of Halitbox was so extreme that it managed to crash my high spec machine with a 9th gen i7, RTX 2080 Ti and 16 gigabytes of RAM not once, but twice. But the worst part about the software is its inability to actually do its job correctly. After waiting for 15 to 20 minutes to slice and send a model to the printer, I attempted to print this large dragon not once but twice, and both times I had incredible layer shifts in the exact same spot, both wasting two days of printing as well as an enormous amount of resin. In terms of support generation, Halitbox has limitations that can be incredibly frustrating. The software only offers two options to generate supports, you either have fully managed manual or fully automatic, and if you choose fully automatic supports and hollow a model out, the entire interior of the model is going to be supported, with no way to edit or modify the auto generated supports. The only thing you can do is manually delete supports. This can be problematic if you only need support for a specific area on the model. However, it's worth noting that when using automatic supports, they tend to break away incredibly easily, which is a positive aspect of the software support generation feature as well as the printer's ability to print the requested geometry. As with the Mage firmware itself, relating to Halibox, I'm opting to limit my concerns and bug findings to what I've just mentioned. It is important to know that Halitbox has a significantly greater number of issues not listed here and I highly recommend that you use Chudubox instead. Now I've reached the end of the video where I give my final take on this product and it's clear that there are a huge number of bugs and user experience issues but I remain hopeful that Creality will fix everything as they've promised. The bones of this machine are great and if all of the firmware issues are fixed then I think someone can be happy owning this machine. In regards to the resin pump, I finally got a new pump in the mail but unfortunately it was too late to test for this video, so I recommend you go to the link in the description to join my discord server if you want more information about how the pump functions. And as for the purported speed of this machine, unfortunately I cannot attest to that either because I never received the Creality Fast Resin. Supposedly I have fast resin in the mail but it has been multiple weeks and I still don't have it in my possession, so again if you want to know how fast this machine prints and how well it prints at that speed, you're going to have to join the Discord and you can get more information on that when it arrives as well. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. If you're still here, go ahead and post chocolate covered bacon in the description so I know who my true followers are. And guys, again, like I said, thank you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.